All right, we are live. Welcome everybody coming in. We are so excited for you to join us for our event today. You have made your way to the Academic Connect event for quite a few programs actually. So today we are pri very privileged to be met with the design program, communication studies, journalism, and public relations all in one. And so if you are here to learn about any one of those programs, maybe all four, you have found your way to the right spot. And so we welcome you as you are coming in today. As we go ahead and get started, we'll go ahead and start with some introductions. And so my name is Thomas. I am an admissions counselor here at Azusa Pacific University. I actually graduated from here in 2018 with a degree in communication management. And so it is really great to be back in like company with some of my friends here today. And I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves today. And so Becky, if you wanna go ahead and start, go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Becky Rowe. I'm the uh, program director for design studies. I'm a, a, a professor in, the, in, in design studies and I've been here for almost 20 years. So I've seen a lot of change and it's been pretty fun. Hi there, my name is Kent Walls and I'm an assistant professor of journalism here at APU. I'm also the program director and I also lead all of student media at APU. My past is about 15 to 20 plus years in professional media in some capacity, digital radio, national TV, regional TV, uh, a wide range of content. And then I came to APU about five years ago. Hey everyone, my name is Ishmael Lopez Medell. I am um, the program director for the public relations program at APU. It's a, our newest program, uh, only four years in. That's what I uh, came to APU to do five years ago. And before that, I've had a long uh, international career, uh, almost 20 years in public relations, advertising, branding, and that sort of thing. Wonderful, thank you all for those introductions. With that, each of our lovely faculty members today does have a great presentation ready to go. And so before we start that though, something I do wanna draw our attention to is our Q&A feature. So if you look in the bottom of your screen, there will be a bar that says Q&A. If you hit that, that will let you type in any questions you may have. So at any point during our conversation day, if you have a question that you would like us to answer live during our talk today, we can go ahead and do so. And there will be time actually at the end of our time here to answer those questions in a Q&A. So again, at any point, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the box. Without further ado, Becky, I'm going to hand this off to you. Okay. So I have a, a presentation, a slide presentation that mostly shows you some of the work projects, the projects that students work on in, in the process of completing their graphic design major. Um, and, and before I start into that, um, I just want to mention our alumni uh, move on to some really pretty fun jobs everywhere from working for Nike or Adidas to Facebook. Um, those are the big names. Um, and then we have people who have gotten jobs in really any number of um, exciting design firms. Most design firms aren't quote unquote famous, but they are the Designers are oftentimes the people who create the great looking things that we use every day, like your handy dandy um, iPhone or uh, other phone that you might have. So um, oftentimes designers don't end up, other than those big names, don't necessarily end up in, in work that is gives them a big name, but they create a lot of the things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we also have people who work, a, a lot of people who come to APU are interested in working in the nonprofit sector. And so we have several alumni who are working for um, um, a church design um, uh, offices, uh, both in Southern California as well as across the country. So I'm going to, with that, I'm going to share my screen and show you some work. And, and talk a little bit about what the projects are. Okay. So here, I'm gonna start with a simple cover page. These first two slides are from a project a student did in an area called editorial design. And so in, in this case, the, the student took the, 
the photographs as well as did the overall layout and um, typography. This is a project, a page from a student who was interested in cooking and created uh, what a design might look like for a cookbook. These next several slides are from projects that represent the idea of branding. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Designers do the visual part of a branding project. And actually in both journalism and public relations and oftentimes people in comm in general, th these four areas oftentimes actually work together on what is called a branding project. And nowadays branding is a very popular uh, application for um, both the visual arts as well as communication. So this was a rebrand uh, for thrifty ice cream, which we could always appreciate at this point. Um, and here's a uh, branding for a new company called Phoenix Coffee and for a rebrand for Pete's, which is a little bit more well-known. In Pasadena, which is right next to uh, Azusa, uh, they sponsor what they call an art night, which um, all the different galleries, a lot of food trucks, um, um, other museums, the art galleries, they have a night where everything is open and free. So this student decided to rebrand this event in Pasadena called Art Night. And this slide didn't load. <laughs> um, here's a rebrand for the Art Institute of Chicago, in case anyone knows about that place in the Midwest. It's one of the top, if not the top, museums and schools actually for art and design. Here's another branding project for a series of posters. And I'm gonna show you um, kind of uh, uh, several slides here that are mostly illustration type of slides. We have a lot of students who are also interested in overall illustrative types of things. So this is a student's um, series. He was also investigating, he has a Latino background. And so he was investigating some visual culture aspects of his um, personal background as a Latino. Another student was a big fan of the uh, Jonas Brothers. So did these posters. The, this slide and then the next one, this one were characters that a student invited it in, uh, created and designed um, that she was going to develop into a gaming application. She's actually currently working for a local design firm in, next door to Azusa and Glendora as doing coding for their website design. So that's what I have from the Department of Design. And uh, I'm totally happy to answer any kind of questions. Design is a really exciting field. When I was working as a full-time designer, I never went to work hating the day that I had to go to work because it's just a fun and exciting field. And it's always developing and doing innovative uh, approaches to the future. All right. Thank you. Becky, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. I think we're gonna jump into journalism right now. Um, Ishmael, could you do me a favor and share your screen so we have the presentation? Perfect, thank you very much. Well, my name is Kent Walls, I'm the assistant professor and also lead integrate, uh, uh, the lead advisor for integrated student media here at APU, also the journalism program director. I'm grateful to be here, grateful to have each and every one of you here tonight. Thanks for taking the time. Um, just a couple things, I'll give you the 30 second pitch on my background outside of what I said in the introduction, but I come from 20 plus years in media in some capacity, I started my career with the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Phoenix Suns. And then I transitioned to Los Angeles about 16 years ago, worked for Fox Sports covering college football nationally. From there, I went to a network called Versus, which is now NBC Sports as an executive producer and host for them. From there, I moved on to start my own company and also jump into national and sports talk radio here locally, working for Yahoo Sports Radio and a wide range of radio networks here in Los Angeles. 
And then also uh, after that, I started an additional company that I actively still run. And that's, uh, we have a wide range of clients, everyone from Facebook to Nike to Jordan uh, and several others. So tonight we're gonna cover outside of design. We're also gonna talk through the three other majors within the department of comm studies. So uh, as you see right there, create, connect, change. That's what we're all about as a department. And that includes communication management, that includes public relations, and then that includes my major, which is journalism. So we'll jump right into it. I think we have, uh, you see it right there. And we also have a master's in strategic communication, but that's not for this audience. So let me tell you a little bit about journalism. Wow, you talk about an industry that's uh, been a hot topic of conversation for the last couple of years and continues to be a hot topic of conversation. And I've spent the last 20 years in that industry in some capacity, and I'm very grateful for that. And I've had some incredible experiences. And so I, I always tell students, I never thought I would be in higher education uh, at this point in my career. I, I, God had some different plans for me and I just kind of stumbled into it and opportunity presented itself and another opportunity presented itself and APU came calling. And um, I'm, I'm so grateful to be part of this community. And, and I, I, I look forward to you potentially being part of this community very soon because it's an amazing place. Um, as far as the journalism major is concerned, I'll make this as quick as possible. I don't typically follow our slides. Uh, when I got here four, four and a half years ago, there were three things that we kind of had to assess. The first one was curriculum. The second was our branding as a group. And the third was our facilities. And so we've overhauled all of those. When I first got here, uh, the student media group uh, and the curriculum and the facilities all needed work. Uh, they were doing the best with what they had but it needed a lot of work. And so we're so grateful. Uh, you talk about the curriculum side of things, the overhaul has happened. We have created active newsrooms on campus. We've created classrooms that reflect exactly what you see in media environments. From a branding perspective, we overhauled our whole student media group. So all you have to do is go to zunews.com, zunews.com. And when I first got here, the student media website got about 300 visitors to 400 visitors a month. And now zoonews.com gets anywhere from 50 to 70,000 unique visitors a month. For a campus of 7,000 students, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and that's not my doing, that is entirely the students doing. Uh, they've done some incredible work to make that happen and they create a high level content uh, consistent, consistently regarding that. And then the third one was facilities. Uh, when I first got here, uh, our facilities, we were kind of spread out across campus and we didn't really have an identity. And so we approached some donors and we were able to create um, a $1.2 million space on West campus that uh, uh, journalism and PR and even graphic design at times share. And it's an incredible newsroom, an incredible space, two stories, two studios, a dedicated podcast studio, a dedicated five camera uh, podcast and video studio with a rotating stage, 21 workstations. It's it's state of the art, it's out of this world. Um, and so we're so grateful that launched about a year and a half ago. And so we've been able to access that and use that consistently uh, outside of, of course, uh, this past semester of COVID and such. So um, as Becky mentioned with alum, we've had just in the last four years, we've had alum go on to do incredible things. ESPN, LA Times, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Uh, one of my grads uh, went on to be the press secretary for Vice President Mike Pence, no big deal. And she graduated from APU three years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. Um, and the cool thing about the journalism major that I always wanna reinforce to students is the skill set that you walk out of uh, from APU is a skill set that goes so far beyond journalism. Um, I, I've had students go into journalism, students go into graphic design, students go into PR, students go into communication, into marketing, advertising, you name it. Uh, because the skill set you're walking out with is so broad um, and touches so many points from a storytelling perspective. And that's kind of the, the foundation and um, of who we are as a group is this idea of storytelling. If you look at the analytics, 82% of consumer internet traffic by next year, it's currently at 80%, is video. 82% of consumer internet traffic is video. And so we like to tell stories and we like to tell stories through video, through audio, through imagery, through writing. Um, and that's the skill set we're creating on a daily basis. And that skill set is intertwined almost with every single one of these majors. And so I always encourage students, if you major in journalism, 
you might walk out of APU and work for CNN or Fox News, or you might walk out of APU and go into public relations or go work for Coca-Cola or go work for Nike or a major brand uh, because the skill set you're obtaining is so much bigger than journalism. Um, so it gives you the foundations and the skill set to be successful in journalism. But if you change your mind in the middle of your college career and get the degree, you can go on to do amazing things. And, and the irony is that the work I do outside of APU is nowadays is much more brand focused and kind of lives in the, the PR realm versus the specific journalism realm as well. So um, I'm very familiar with both worlds. I'm grateful to be here and part of this community. And I think Ish is going to, Dr. Medell, I should say, is going to give you a, kind of an overview now of both uh, PR and communication management. All right, I am. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that awesome presentation, Kent, and uh, and welcome, McKenna, Maya, and Taylor. Uh, we're Tyler. Sorry, we're happy that you're here. Um, we're glad that you could join us. Um, let me just speak uh, for a minute about the this very confusing uh, intro to college life in this very weird year. Uh, so we realize this is this is the beginning of. Of, a, of an exciting time and at the beginning of a life-changing journey hopefully and, and we're glad that you are you know checking this out that you're checking APU out um, and that you are making decisions so um, we realize there's lots of um, different pressures and lots of different decisions but the idea is also to think you know big picture of uh, how these four years are going to transform you into um, you know professionals into big thinkers into people who care about your community and, and what you do um, outside of, uh, of APU. So um, we're really, uh, we're a very tight department. As, as you can see, we, uh, one of the things that we, we, we really want to emphasize is that what you see is what you get. Uh, so we don't put on a show for, for an event like this. We really care about students. It's a, it's a close community. Um, uh, Ken was talking about one, two very, very crucial issues, uh, which I think you should know by now. Uh, the idea of storytelling is across the board what unites our, our programs. Um, and also the idea that your degree does not necessarily um, limit you to one specific field, right? Some of you might have already an idea of what you want to do. Some of you are are just exploring, are just thinking, you know, well, this, where are my talents? You know, where are my my gifts? Um, you'll be hard pressed these days to find someone who is in our field of communication in general, and that includes design, PR, branding, marketing, advertising, journalism, broadcasting. Uh, we do a little bit of everything, so we have turned into a, a kind of like a um, a uh, very, very wide range of uh, skill sets and opportunities for you too. This is incredible too. Even we, in the midst of COVID-19, the opportunities for remote work uh, are, are incredible. So Ken was mentioning the, the uh, journalism program. I wanna speak to you about communication management and PR. And uh, just so that you have an idea a little bit of what these programs do. Uh, communication is the program where you study the most important element in, in society, which is information and how do you handle information? This is crucial. And especially in the 21st century, in this world that you are inheriting, uh, how you handle information and how you manage information, it's, it's crucial. What you do with a degree in communication management is a multiple uh, um, you know, possibilities of thing. Basically what we do is we study how communication happens in different settings. So you study intercultural communication to understand how someone from a different country like myself engages in, in conversations with, with other people. You talk about nonverbal communication, you study persuasion, you study uh, the role of media in communication, you study um, family communication. So you study how the process of communication takes place in different contexts, in different settings, um, in small groups or, or in organizations uh, at a structural level. Uh, normally this uh, student profile that we have is people who are um, outgoing, who are curious, who uh, want to built into other people who have a curiosity about the world. So uh, this is a very broad description, but it really is what, what you do and your classes will help you and your professors will also help you. We have a, uh, you know, we, we like to think that we have a very close uh, community with our, with our students. Uh, um, you'll find um, professors who will, are here to help you and who are here to walk with you and who are not, um, who are really interested in you as, as, a, as a human being. And that also has to do with the faith component of, of what we do, the fact that we're all, you know, sharing our Christian life and we are all, you know, living that, that, uh, that mission together. Um, the career path for communication is, is very, very, very wide. We have students who've gone to, um, as Kent was mentioning, uh, to work in the White House. We have students who 
are working for the Las Vegas Raiders as part of their communication teams. We have uh, students who go into, into ministry. We have uh, students who go into human resources, uh, corporations, lots of PR jobs, lots of social media jobs. Um, so it's hard to find, uh, unlike other majors, it's hard to find the one area where, where you will end up with a, with a degree in communication management. So it's, a, it's great if you are curious about how things work and why people communicate the way they do, um, and especially in, in this time. So um, it's a wide array of, of um, fields. You should know that all of our programs include a, a mandatory internship that you will do junior or senior year. You can do up to two uh, internships. We will help you find internships um, and we will help you apply what you've learned in the classroom to the internships. The classes at APU, and I think I can speak for the three programs, are, are very hands-on, very practical, uh, very related to, uh, to what's going on. So you cannot thrive in the journalism program if you are not connected to what's going on. You certainly cannot thrive in the PR program if you don't know what happened with, you know, uh, with Budweiser, the Super Bowl, or what's going on uh, in those areas. Uh, it's a small community in class. Our classes are small. We're, you know, we're very connected. And we want to help you find also what this career path would look for you. So that's for communication management. And the program that I direct is public relations, which is in a way uh, how com companies communicate and create better experiences for, uh, for their consumers. So it's, it's um, intertwined with communication, uh, with journalism, with, uh, with design, with branding, with marketing. Uh, we create campaigns and we build connections uh, with their publics. So we do a lot of work. It's a, it's a brand new program. So it has a, a, you know, classes like social media, reputation management. We have a class on, on visual storytelling. We work with, with real clients. Uh, we have a class called Agency. We are working for the Future Lions uh, Festival, which is the Cannes Festival for Advertising. It's top number one in the world. We are working, I'm part of their, um, their faculty uh, group. There's a group of 20 um, professors from all over the world. We get together to this festival. We're working for Lego. So my students tomorrow are, are working on a campaign to pitch uh, creative ideas for Lego and the winning teams in this competition will go to France and present to, uh, to Legos. It's, it's, very, very, um, um, it's very connected. You have to stay very connected to, to uh, what's going on. We emphasize things like social media. We analyze a, a lot of campaigns. We write, we create video, we create uh, um, podcasts. When you do a degree with us, you will see that you share some classes and that you have some room also in your, in your coursework. And we can you know, certainly talk more about that in your, in your questions. Uh, but we also wanna encourage you to be curious and to, um, to find what is it that you wanna do. And even within the, the, uh, the space of a classroom to have the opportunity to, to be creative and to be interested. So all my students write a blog, a weekly blog, and some of them are interested in fashion and PR. So that's what they do. And some of them are interested in sports and PR and that's what they do. And some of them are interested in international affairs. So we want to encourage you since you get here to, uh, to find what is it that you are, you are really interested in. Um, and also it's okay if you don't find it uh, right away. You know, it's, it's also perfectly fine. We are um, a little bit of a jack of all trades in, in a sense. But when it comes to career path, um, uh, so what do you do with a degree in PR? Um, most of our students now are working in an agency setting. So advertising, marketing, social media, uh, there are uh, event planning agencies. There are agencies that specialize in specific um, events. We have a, for instance, we have a student working in an agency that only works for the food industry. So all she does is PR for food brands. We have people working in, in sports. We have lots of students working in social media. Social media, as you can imagine, is the place where most of the, uh, the um, entry level jobs and the internships uh, and the action is, is happening. We have a lot of interest in, non, in nonprofit. We have a specific class for nonprofit communication because it's a huge, huge uh, um, area. We do have uh, students who become bloggers, who become uh, um, credit directors in, in agencies, and, um, and they're all over the place. And, and it's part of the uh, exciting opportunity of, uh, of um, being in a place like, like APU. Um, our student profile is, is similar. We like people who are creative, who are curious, who are interested in, in communication, who are interested in, in uh, creating campaigns, who are interested in brands, who are who are critical thinkers also to analyze how, how brands operate and what moves them, uh, who are interested in what we call corporate social responsibility. So the idea that companies have to invest in society and they are, they are they're giving back. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, same as in journalism and, and, 
and uh, communication management, people who are interested in each other, people who are interested in building communities and, and learning from one another and listening to one another and kind of exploring that. Um, so lots of different options. I don't want to overwhelm you too. Uh, um, I think we are um, good to go. I think as, as far as my presentation goes, I will leave my uh, email um, on the chat. If you guys have any questions or if you want to follow up, uh, please, please, uh, um, we're more than happy to help you. Excellent. Well, thank you once again to all of our panelists for sharing those presentations. Now that we have gone through this part of our night, we are going to go ahead and jump into our Q&A. So once again, if you have any questions, especially in light of the things that we have heard today, go ahead and use the Q&A box and we will be sure to answer those. And so we do have a couple questions ready to go. And so we'll jump with those first of all. And so this first question is going to be a question that I think all three of you could provide us some input with. And this question is, how do each of your programs prepare students for postgraduate life? I know that some of you touched on this a little bit, but if you would care to elaborate on that just a little bit, uh, why don't we start, Becky, if you want to kick us off with that, and then we'll just go in presentation order. So Kent and Ishmael, if you want to jump in afterwards as well. Really good question. Um, there is a big jump from when you finish your college degree. You're, you've finished your formal education, at least for a while. And moving into a professional career is, is a lot different. I, as much work as you do while you're a college student, one of the most common comments that I hear from alumni when they start their first full-time job is where they're working 40 hours a week plus, they're so tired. Um, so one thing that um, I like to do, uh, well, one thing in the design program, we have all the students are required to put together a professional portfolio website. And in the, in the course of that class, um, I invite design alumni to come uh, and now with, with, via a Zoom um, meeting situation because they're all over the country. I have them come and talk about what they did after they graduated from college. And then in the context of this portfolio class, we arrange for students to do mock interviews with um, at least one of those visiting APU alumni. Uh, and, and so it's interesting to see which students prefer talking with the different um, uh, alumni, depending on what their interests are and, and how they see their lives developing in the future. One thing about design is just the fact that we give you a terrific foundation at APU, of course, um, but design changes all the time. And so you will constantly be learning. It's never something where you sit around and and, and sit on your hands because you're always having to learn. And that's part of what makes design exciting. So, so we give you the foundation. I pro we provide you with some um, opportunities to interact with alumni. We do that in not only portfolio class, but a couple of other upper division classes. Um, and so that's how we try to help you make that transition into the professional world. Yeah. Thanks, Becky. That was great. Uh, you know, on our end, from a journalism perspective, I, you know, every single class that I teach, I tell students the first day, I, I treat you like a peer until you give me a reason otherwise. And I take that mantra throughout everything I do in the collegiate experience. And so I remember when I arrived at APU, uh, the student journalism group uh, sports game would occur and it was on a Friday night and the article would be written the following Wednesday, giving you the game recap. And I asked, why, why, why does it take five days for us to write the article? And they go, because we're in college. And I go, okay, well, that's not an excuse. New deadline, hour after the game. That's how we're going to operate. You write the article just like a professional journalist does, and you deliver it an hour after the game ends. And that's how we work as a group moving forward. And at the time, it was like, oh, my goodness, this guy is crazy. But now it's just normal operation for my group. And so that was the first thing was just treating our environment exactly like any other major media entity would operate. And then that led into a wide range of other things. How we operate as a group from a communication standpoint, whether it's little things like most of our communication is on Slack versus email uh, or the various elements of Google Drive and just like actively editing articles 
on, on Google Docs or on Frame.io, which is our video review software. Uh, those little things, my students will say to me, oh, is this just your process? And I'll go, no, it's not, because I can tell you this with confidence. I have current clients, including Facebook, one of the most largest media entities in the world, and I work with them on a daily basis, and that's their process. They have an internal version of Slack. They use the Google platform for most communication, and they operate in a very similar fashion as my group does at APU. And so I can instill that confidence. The second you leave APU, you're going to be doing very similar things, just in a different form or fashion with a different entity per se. And so that's my approach is like, how can I, and sometimes it's hard on students because, you know, you're coming out of high school and it's, it's kind of a big culture shock. Now you're in Southern California and you've got a professor who just expects you to do good work and hit deadlines. But I, I don't think I could operate any other way. And it's been fun to watch, you know, you go through this growing curve in about two to three months. And then all of a sudden that's just how you operate and you operate with confidence. And when you leave APU after three and a half years of doing that, then all of a sudden you're just ready to roll into. Now, I will say, just like Becky said, when you, when you get to your first Christmas break and you get a day and a half off at Christmas versus three weeks, that, that was the big, that was the shocker for me as a college student to a professional the first time I didn't get Christmas break. <laughs> Ishmael, go for it. Yeah, thanks, Ken, this is so true. Uh, let me tell you something he didn't tell you. Uh, there's no other way. Uh, we either do that and you get to work at a professional speed right away or, or you will not thrive in the field. And four years go by really, really quick. So, so, that's, uh, uh, so it's, it's tough in, in, in the sense of, uh, of the, the work. In my case, I think I, my obsession is to, there is a, there's a bridge between uh, the school and real life in the agency, in, in our case. And my obsession is to close that bridge as much as, much as possible, to get you ready for, you, for the next thing whatever the next thing could be. Now, the way we do that is normally through three different, th different things. Uh, I wanna teach you how to see, how to look at the world, how to pay attention to what's going on, how to, you know, how to be curious, how to ask questions, how to be interesting and how to you know, approach us. Uh, and there's a lot of that that's on you. So we can give you the tools, we're there for you, but it's also to be quite honest, uh, and I'm just speaking for myself here. Um, if you have no interest then that, that's on you. Uh, but, the, you know, but I want to get you ready because I would rather have you ready now so that when you go to an agency, you thrive from, from day one. Uh, the other way that we do that, that connection is uh, we want to teach you how to think. Uh, college is, is uh, I joke with my students, uh, uh, this is the last time you have time to think. This is the last time that I'm giving you a book, read a chapter this week, think about it, let's talk about it in class. In real life, in a, in a, in a busy uh, world like, like the world of PR, you will not have time to think. Uh, um, maybe in your commute, you know. So we want to help you think deeper and think uh, uh, about the possibilities and think about the uh, potential for innovation, creativity, and uh, just think about how, how your world is changing. And we also want to give you the opportunities to produce, right? So um, our classes are, are heavy on the, on the production side, on the uh, case studies. We have a class at the end of your life with us uh, called Capstone NPR, where you will create a, a, a website for yourself, where you brand yourself, where you present all the work you've done, where you choose, um, you know, and uh, I even joke with my students because uh, uh, we are very, uh, you know, we're very, very direct. We try to provide opportunities. For instance, I've been leading uh, international study abroad trips for the last four years, and we've been taking students to agencies in New Zealand, in Amsterdam, in Berlin, in Madrid, um, and they get to see the work. We bring also uh, guest speakers, we, we bring professionals, and we, we get you connected. Um, we have a lot of resources for you um, that will help you think about not just the, the hard skills that you'll get, but also the soft skills. So when you get to the, to the workplace, it's all about, um, you know, it's all about how, how reliable you are and how you know, resilient you are and how do you accept criticism and how do you work on tight deadlines and how do you um, you know, I, I, I sometimes teach into the internship uh, class and the number one comment from our, our, um, our employers is, uh, you know, we want students to be curious and ask questions. So we do that part of, uh, of um, you know, getting ready. Um, and I think APU is a, is a good environment. We also do that in the context where we are concerned also about uh, spiritual life. And, and, and that looks very different, by the way, that it is not an imposition. We have very, very different uh, 
perspectives on faith and different walks of faith. And we're, I think we do a good job at, at presenting ourselves also as, as part of that conversation and being honest with our students and understanding, okay, from a Christian perspective, what does it look like to uh, look at a particular campaign and what are the, you know, what are the ethical components to that? Or, or how do you report you know, or how do you engage uh, in this really crazy outrage world um, from, from the perspective of a Christian journalist or a Christian practitioner? And we go deep. We just don't go into, uh, you know, we used to do, um, uh, well, I wouldn't work for this particular brand, but we go deeper than that. There's lots of, there's lots of connections. And I think we're called to be intelligent human beings. So we try to uh, get you connected to, uh, you know, with the market. Wonderful. Thank you all for those responses. Actually, in response to that, we do have a question on something you just said, actually, Ishmael, and that is about study abroad. So you did kind of touch on that just now, but could you elaborate a little bit more on what those study abroad appoint or opportunities look like within your department? Sure, uh, with only one caveat, which is COVID-19. So until we're all back where there's no traveling uh, in 2021, at least, but um, yeah. So I, I've spent half of my career in my home country of Spain. And when I moved to the US 10 years ago, I've been taking students abroad. So what normally what that looks like is a short, and APU has different opportunities. APU has semesters abroad uh, um, with different universities in different, different places. They also have mission trips, which are short and one week, two weeks, and th they're not academic, they're just service. So you go and serve, it used to be all over the world. We have a specific connection with Mexico Outreach, which is uh, um, uh, Ensenada in Mexico. Uh, we go there like, we used to go there like every three, four weeks with students just to serve. Um, the program that I, that I do is, is study abroad where it's connected to a class. So what we do is we, we, we take a class on normally on global branding, international PR, and then you travel for normally two, three weeks to uh, different countries or a specific location with a small group of students. Uh, and it's, it's a life changing event. It's, you know, um, it's the event where students can really, tell. you can take up to two classes, sometimes even three classes uh, for this project. So that's, that's, a, that's also a great way to do it. And we normally do them in, in the summer. They're a little bit on pause right now, obviously, because we don't have the capacity. But once they come back, we've had at uh, least, I think, a good, a good maybe 20 options for different students. Most of these trips will include um, classes that are general education. So even if you're interested in the country um, or the destination, but not necessarily is, is the field that you uh, are interested in. For instance, all my classes, all my trips uh, include intercultural communication. So I've had students from uh, you know, psychology or you know, nursing, uh, allied health, who just, you know, I wanna go to New Zealand. Uh, can I take this class? Sure. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting, uh, interesting experience. And we hope to bring it back strongly after you know, this, this is over, of course. Excellent. Yeah. On that note, uh, Kent, Becky, do either of your programs offer study abroads? No, we don't have any formal design study abroad, but um, design students, probably, I'd say about half of them try to take advantage of the different um, various study abroad programs that APU offers. The one that has been most popular is the um, study abroad program with South Africa. Uh, again, I think as Ishmael was saying, just to emphasize that they can definitely be life-changing opportun opportunities. You just learn so much. Yeah, on our side, uh, specifically abroad, it's a partnership with the PR major and some of those classes overlap. And so those are typically the classes that we offer for uh, the international trips uh, from New Zealand to Spain that Ishmael has mentioned. Uh, and then also domestically, we have a study in New York City semester. We have a partnership with the university in New York, and we've had several students uh, go there for a semester interning at everyone, you know, one of my most recent students interned at Newsweek and then came back and ran all of student media at APU. Wow, very cool. Thank you. I didn't actually know that myself. That is really cool to hear. And so this next question actually will be for you, Kent, is it has to do with journalism. And so I know that as the department has changed and evolved over the couple of years, we have implemented quite a few brand new things that are on our campus. And so what kind of facilities can new students expect to take advantage of coming into journalism now? Yeah, I mean, the cool thing about us is, uh, when, it, when, like I mentioned, we were able to build that $1.2 million space. But when I got to APU, uh, they said, hey, Kent, we need $50,000 and we're going to build it on East Campus. And I said, 
yeah, fifty thousand dollars is not even going to get us close. So I, I actually spent a good six months really getting to know the campus and understanding the infrastructure from a technology standpoint. We already had about four million dollars of infrastructure in place on West Campus. And there was a soundstage and there was a control room and there was a theater and there was a space where we could potentially uh, create a temporary space while we did construction. And so that is what we targeted and that's what we ended up securing and ended up fundraising for. And so we've built a space that's literally steps from a control room that you would see in any broadcast environment, any live TV environment, if you're watching the Emmys or a, the Super Bowl, we have something very similar on a smaller scale at APU that we are used for several of our classes. And then we also have a soundstage down the hall that that's tied to, that's also tied to our space as well. And so we're able to bring sets in and out if we wanna do more of like a morning show type vibe or maybe a E entertainment type studio vibe. We've actually built sets in that space with the students uh, as part of the experience for a class. So uh, the cool thing is, is everything's tied into each other at this point and they're literally steps away from each other. So from an experience standpoint and a, a technology and a facility standpoint, it's state of the art. It's as, as good as it gets, in my opinion. And then the cool, the, the great thing, like I said, is our actual space uh, is two stories, which is on West Campus isn't something that you often see, but we were able to build a loft type space that has our podcast studio, has you know the couch that everybody wants to sit on and then some additional workspaces and then my office as well. There it is, picture. That's downstairs. Wow. Upstairs. <clears throat> that is really cool and how old is this this facility now it's pretty new isn't it yeah it's uh two two years old tops wow yeah what we do there is is great as you can see here this is a guest speaker that i had from a different university so they here here are the students um we have the giant screen so it's great for you know, you know for uh for viewing this is the uh, the uh, television studio but this is a pr class where we also meet and you can work in different different settings because uh, the, the the space is designed to be you know creative and, and alive. So it's a it's a fantastic uh, place. It's um I don't think it's 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 not only it's not far from what you will get in a real newsroom. I think it's more spacious, you know, than, <laughs> than that real newsroom. Yeah, the cool thing is too. You see some of the IMAX. All those IMAX are retractable. So we have eighteen IMAX downstairs that you can retract into the desk and then create more of a war room type environment versus if everybody wants a workstation, they can have it. And so, but you know, with laptops for students, everyone has their preference. And so we just allow students to have their preference. Uh, but for some of the high level video stuff, you want uh, a computer that has a little bit more processing power. So that's what those workstations are for. Wow, very cool. And those go right into the desk, like you were saying? Just gotta hit a button and it goes right down and up. Wow, that, that may be the coolest thing I've heard all night. That is awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for showing us that visual. I know for me, I'm a visual learner, so seeing that really does help. Next question we have today is going to be for you, Becky. It's a design question. I have a question coming in saying, if I want to get my artwork out into the world, would it be best for me to major in design or would it be better for me to actually major in art? Wow, that's a trick tricky question, but a really good question. Um, the design program is actually right now being um, upgraded, hopefully, um, so that the emphasis will be on giving uh, design students a, a really solid foundation. And then uh, the rest of the requirements will be made up of electives. And those electives can include uh, almost all any of the, uh, the dis, uh, art, the classes from the art major. So by the time you graduate with your with a design major, you can have a really good combination of both art and design. By the nature of the question, I can assume that you're really interested in both art and design and art and design definitely overlap. I think that learning about traditional art, traditional media only will uh, build up your skills as a designer. There's a lot of uh, work in the, in, in the process of doing traditional media with art where you're forced to really think about your, uh, what you really wanna accomplish. Design is oriented towards working with a client. And so there's a different emphasis there. But in my experience, 
the more able you are as a designer to express your goals in relationship to, to a client, the better the client will come to see that you actually know what you're talking about. So as far as getting your art out there, I think that uh, design in and of itself, again, a commercial enterprise for the most part, uh, gives you, you can get a job as we like to joke. There are many designers though, who are also engaged in crafting artwork using many traditional media. And they will oftentimes be involved in showing their, their artwork in gallery shows that I have uh, one of my adjuncts is I, I give her a bad time. I, I always say that she never sleeps because she's always posting things on Instagram. Every summer, she's in at least two shows. Oftentimes they're group shows, sometimes they're solo shows. So I think that it, it provides a nice platform where indeed you can get a job, pay your rent, and at the same time have opportunities to express yourself as uh, we'll, we'll say a fine artist. Excellent, very insightful. Thank you, Becky. All right, we're coming in hot with another question that I think would be great to hear from all three of you. And so for this question, let's let's go in reverse order from last time. So we'll start with Ishmael, go to Kent and then Becky. But the question is this, I know that APU is a private Christian university. So how do you incorporate elements of faith within the classes that you teach? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. When I came to APU, I taught a, a class um, called multimedia publishing and design which is basically photoshop and indesign and I'm, I'm thinking how do i do this uh and you know how we do that in, in that class um we talk about creativity and we talk about if you think god is creative and you are made in his image how come you don't feel creative and then boom that opens the door to a lot of different conversations so i we try to do what we call faith integration in every classroom um uh, so every class will try to see and it's, it's quite simple and very complex is how do you look at the world from this particular class, whatever that class is, how do you look at it from a Christian perspective? And, and how does your faith in, inform that particular practice? And the other way around, how do you look at your faith from the perspective of, you know, in our case, for instance, in a public relations uh, class, where you're talking about, you know, social media. Well, there's lots of areas of social media that are concerning, right? Uh, in terms of, you know, privacy and also the negative impact of social media. How does that look like from, you know, from that perspective? So we do a good job at bringing questions that seem, seem to kind of like open doors for more conversation. So it's not just that we pray before class or I never put up like a nice little image of a beach with a, with a verse. Uh, we try to be real, you know, and we try to ask, okay, uh, how, does, how does your faith inform how you, how you behave on social media? What does that look like for you? And we are very open also with different expressions of faith. Uh, we have lots of students who are all over the place. We have students who are coming from traditional evangelical uh, Protestant backgrounds. We have Catholic students. We have students who are exploring, who are not really sure. And we really create a nice environment where people can feel, okay, we're here together. Also, APU has a lot of uh, um, resources. For instance, we have a mentorship program. My wife and I have been part of this mentorship program uh, for, for uh, students. So we meet with, uh, we used to meet, this is before COVID-19, of course. Uh, we used to meet with one student every, every week to go over, you know, um, you know, devotionals or just, you know, pray together. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity for growth beyond, beyond just a classroom. So I think in my case, it's, it's just let's make it real. That's, that's my goal. Thanks, Ishmael. Yeah, I would say on our end, there's a wide range of conversations in regards to faith and how we integrate that into an academic environment. Just like Ishmael said, I think from a relational standpoint, first and foremost, it's, you know, I did my undergrad at a major state university, and I'm not sure I have one professor from college who knows who I am as a person, because I sat in classrooms of 1,200 people. I was a number to a certain TA who then reported to the professor, um, and and so I had a, a different experience from a collegiate perspective versus in my classroom. I know every single person's, and that's not saying anything about me. It's just we have smaller classrooms. There's nine people in one of my classes this semester. So we really have a chance to get to know each other. And with that comes natural conversations about faith, even outside of the classroom. Uh, when I previously taught at state universities, I remember students 
I vividly remember this because you're in a state university, you're not allowed to have open conversations about your faith in a classroom. And I would have students who would come up to me after class and go, can, can I walk with you on campus? And they would go, hey, are you a, are you a Christian? Cause I have some questions. And then they would like try to sneak the questions into me. And so I always think it's so cool that we can have those conversations openly in a classroom environment. And then if you talk about journalism in general, uh, you know, it's an industry that's it had a microscope on it for uh, a very long time in the last five to six years. And it's, you know, oftentimes considered um, the voice of the voiceless. It's an objective industry that's trying to present information to an audience, but in many ways that has shifted. And so being honest about those conversations and being honest about where some of the industry has gone and then coming back to the roots and the foundations of it, of why are we trying to create this information and who are we providing it to from a truth perspective and the parallels that you see in the Bible from that perspective. And then also just from a storytelling perspective, if you just look at narrative arcs, we're able to sometimes look at biblical stories and stories that we write or stories that we create via video or via audio. And what are those parallels? I have an assignment in class every single time where I say, okay, we're going to do the in-class assignment where you're going to write the story about a campus news event, et cetera. But then you're also going to pick a biblical story and show me the parallels from a narrative structure standpoint. Like, where is this specific portion that you mentioned in your campus article, whether it's, you know, the headline, whether it's the, the, the middle part of the story that we're trying to uh, showcase, we also want to showcase that in the biblical story as well. So uh, there's, and then the final thing I would say is I, I have a certain type of class called an audible class. If you're a football fan, you know that term. Uh, just calling an audible. And I've had countless amounts of those classes where I just call an audible and I'll walk into class and something's happened. Um, it could be, and oftentimes it's usually very serious, but sometimes it's been very humorous or funny. And I will abandon everything that I planned on doing and adjust to what's happening. And the most recent one was, uh, was it middle of February? I can't even remember at this point of last year. And I remember walking in, I had just landed from San Francisco and was coming to class after a meeting and COVID had just been declared a pandemic. And I walked into my classroom and I said, guys, I don't know what's going on, but I don't know if I'm gonna see you again the rest of this semester. Announcements are possibly coming in the next you know, day or so. And we're supposed to do speeches today uh, or we're supposed to do presentations. And I said, I'm pushing those a week. Let's just have a conversation. Let's talk about like what this looks like, what this means, uh, how this impacts you as an individual. What do you, what questions are you asking right now from a faith perspective, from a personal perspective? What if we have to leave campus? And I just sat there with my students and talked to them. And, and I think those are moments that you wouldn't maybe necessarily see um, at other institutions. And, and I, I had students email me because days later we all had to leave campus because of the pandemic, et cetera, and just said, thank you for that. Like, that's what I needed. Um, and that's not, again, that's not on me. That was just my natural instinct is it, I'm, I'm a relational professor. I want to make sure I establish that relationship with you first and foremost. And I want to make sure that we both are on a first name basis and that we, I can help you progress in your career as much as you possibly can. And so wherever I have a chance to integrate faith in the classroom is something that I look forward to. Yes, so building a little bit on what Kent was saying there about um, the personal nature of APU and our smaller class classes. Uh, I oftentimes talk to my students on a one-on-one -on -one basis and it, in the visual arts, whether it's design or traditional media, there's always a discussion regarding for it to be a Christian image, does it have to be does there have to be a cross in the, in the image? Does do you have to have a picture of Jesus? Um, do you have to quote from scripture in order for this represented thing to qualify as being Christian? Just, just this week, I was talking with a student who is a, an amazing illustrator and he's working on a project this semester where he wants to create a graphic novel. And so we talked about how most stories, many stories, I should put it that way, are based on all of our mythological creations over many centuries of time. And so we were talking about how do you take a, a, Greek, a Greek myth mythological story and turn it into a graphic novel 
of characters that reflects his faith. He was very concerned about wanting to integrate how his faith was represented in the characters that he was going to, to include. And so, so many of our stories have, I'll put it this way, a relationship with deep-seated questions such as, who am I? And um, so, so we as Christians believe that we're people made in the image of God. And so that also becomes another significant point of information that we as both visual communicators and, uh, and, and otherwise, if that's who we see ourselves as people made in the image of God, there's all kinds of things that you can draw from that when you're trying to integrate ideas about how to, how to promote um, somebody's new uh, uh, restaurant. Uh, it, it doesn't seem oftentimes so on the surface, but, but again, yeah, when you have these conversations, you can get much deeper into that conversation and, and also one's faith. The other thing in design about, I can't remember, five or six years ago, we had several design students graduated and they uh, got jobs, really terrific, cool design studio types of jobs. So they're out in the world working. We had one of our adjunct professors is uh, what had been dis discipling them. He'd been working in the industry for years. And they came to, to him and to uh, those of us uh, who are their professors. And they said, hey, look, we want to start a group of Christian designers where we can get together and talk about our faith as designers in a secular industry. And so they named the, the group Spire. And it's still going strong. We're trying to eventually uh, students from uh, local, even secular art schools have become affiliated with it as well as a couple of local Christian universities. It's, so it's growing and it's really great to have a resource where after you graduate from a Christian university, you can then meet with people and talk about these same issues even though you're now working. So the, those are just a couple of things that we try to stress in the process of building students, both their practical skills, as well as who they are as an individual. Excellent, thank you. All such great answers. And so we are coming down to the wire here for our event. We've got about five minutes left. And so we are gonna conclude with one final question that we'll go ahead and ask each of our panelists here today. And so our last question is this. So I know that for our, our audience that is here today, they are prospective students who have not come to college yet and may not know exactly what to expect coming into a brand new experience like a university. And so what I'd like to know from each of you is what two or three pieces of advice can you give to our new students in your about your major and how to best prepare for career success even after they graduate things that they can be thinking about now as they're on the cusp of making those big decisions and so as we conclude today why don't we start with ishmael and then we can go to kent and then becky you can close us out for the night yes well those are that's kind of like the big question um I would say in my personal experience, uh, seeing students have been doing this for 18 years. So I would say uh, number one, be curious. Whatever you do, just just open your eyes and, and, and look around. Uh, um, I don't think it's, it's where you go to college matters as much as how do you go to college. Uh, so use the resources that you have at your disposal. Sometimes uh, uh, universities have uh, you know fancy libraries, but they you know the professors are never there in their office hours. So um, APU has a ton of resources in all in all aspects uh, to cover your experience as a as a student. Um, so make sure that you use them. You know, if you have a studio that offers you, you know, like you have like this awesome podcast studio, and you want to try podcast podcast, just go talk to Ken and, and and try to you know try to trick him into letting you uh, you know use it and and, and explore it. So um, be curious. Uh, it's it's how you go to school, uh, and then invest in people because at the end of the day, four years go by. They, they just go by so quickly, uh, and it's the people that you are with, uh, you know, during this this journey that that will make an impact for your for you, you know, you know, in in life. That's what I would say. 
Yeah, I think my advice is going to sound somewhat similar to that. I, two things that I typically say, first and foremost is always be the best in the room. And if you can't be the best in the room, strive to be the best in the room. And those that approach to college is going to separate you not only collegiately, but then professionally. Uh, your work ethic, how you approach your work on a daily basis is a decision. And it's the people that I always say, the only way to have a conversation in my professional setting about my faith is if I'm the best in the room. Because if I, if I don't gain that respect professionally, no one's going to listen to me. And so that's the only way I can truly have a conversation about my faith. If, if I'm the best in the room, we're striving to be. So don't be the student or the employee, employee who's constantly complaining and constantly gossiping and all of these things. Be the one who's just working hard to get better every single day. So that's the first piece of advice. And then I would say be present. We live in a society, we live in the most connected, disconnected society of all time. Uh, and, and I think everybody can kind of interpret what that means where we can connect with anyone around the world in seconds, but we also live, especially right now, a very disconnected feels like life. And so uh, as much as you possibly can in that moment in class, when your tendency, just like my tendency is sometimes, is to, I'll be in the middle of a lecture sometimes and my wife or someone will text me and I need to text them back and I need to be present. I need to be not looking at my phone, but it just clicks up on my iMac while I'm lecturing and I read the text or maybe I see it on my phone, but as best as, and that doesn't just mean stay away from your phone. It just means be present as much as you possibly can. If that's in chapel, if that's in class, if that's in the dorm room, if that's your first day on campus, like enjoy your experience because like Ishmael said, four years of college, in my case, four and a half, uh, goes really fast. I had to take that extra semester. And it's, it's, it's a really amazing time. The, the relationships, the friendships that you're going to build in college are unlike any other, in my opinion, because you spend so much time together, so many late nights, and you build those bonds so quickly. Some of my closest friends in life uh, were from college, and I'm so grateful for that experience. So I would just encourage you, those two things, be the best in the room and be present. Okay, just because I like to be different sometimes, I'm gonna say something that sounds like it might be the opposite of what Kent was suggesting. And that is, don't be afraid of failure because in order to create a successful design, you're gonna be making it over and over and over again. Design is iterative. You do, it, you, you do it one time, you get feedback. Some people call that failure. I like to say, well, it's, part, it's just one of the steps. You get feedback, the director says, go back, start over again. One of the uh, alumni that I had come speak to my class last fall, who's at Facebook, was that was his advice to the, to the group, was be ready to be wrong. That was what he said right off the top. And the, so going back to what Ken said, that doesn't mean that you're not trying to be the best. In fact, oftentimes the way to become the best is by making mistakes because then you get that mistake out of the way and you can take more steps forward to accomplishing what you really, um, what will be become the best. Um, and, and, and so in relationship to that, uh, kind of piggybacking on uh, Ishmael's word, be curious ask a ton of questions. Don't ever hesitate to ask your professor's questions. Keep asking questions. Ask your, your friends. Um, ask people around campus. AP is a relational university. And don't, same thing, don't be afraid. There's, a, like they say, there might be stupid questions, but don't be afraid to ask them because it's just part of getting getting to know people and your way around life. Becky, I have to jump in and just tell you that I tell students be the best in the room. And then my second point is fail often, just so you know, <laughs> right. because right. that honestly, that's how I teach is I call it getting reps. You have to get reps. And that means making mistakes. I actually showed my media entrepreneurship class, a video this week from Jeff Bezos that said, I've made his second, you know, wealthiest man in the world, not that that's the definition of success, but he said, I've made billions of dollars of mistakes at Amazon, billions. And then he goes on to list five or six projects, pets.com and several other things that he said were absolute failures for Amazon. But he said, it's the ones like Prime 
And it's the ones like this that were, had I not taken that risk and had I not been afraid to fail, I wouldn't have taken the risk and had these very successful entities within Amazon. So I completely agree with you. And that's like my second main point that I talk about after saying be the best in the room. Right on. Well, I think that is the perfect way to conclude our night. So thank you so much to all three of you for joining us today. For those of you in the audience, my friend Emily is right on her way. I'll drop it some links in that chat for you. Uh, that is, those are some resources we have provided for you today. So that first form you're going to see is a Google form where if you are interested in visiting a class for the time being virtually, but still virtually vi visiting a class and connecting with any of the departments that we have spoken with today, that'll be your way to do that, that Google form. The other thing you're seeing is a link to our virtual tour. We do actually have a platform out where you can come visit our campus through the wonders of the internet. So go ahead and take a look at that if you would like to come see what our campus looks like from the comfort of your own home right on a computer screen. And the last link you're seeing is if you don't know where to start, if you need to figure out where to start an application or get a hold of an admissions counselor like myself on our staff, that last email, ugadmissions at apu.edu, will be for you. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you to our lovely panelists for joining us tonight. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and I look forward to all that this event leads to in the future. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you so much.